In this video, we're going to be setting up the read part of our CRUD functionality. So what we'll do is we'll get a load of products from the back end and display it to the view. Also, we'll set up the individual view. So when the user clicks on this, uh, we'll display an individual product. So how we'll set this up is similar to what we did in the last video. We'll start on the actions first. And then we'll just work our way down. We'll knock out the effect, the reducer. And then also in this case, we're going to need selectors. So we're going to be making them as well in this video. Let's start off with our actions. Inside of the product action file, open that up. So we'll need a total of six uh, load products. So copy this one right here. And then just paste it five more times. All right, so we should have a total of six. Okay. And we'll just start at the top and work our way down. So this is going to be for loading a list of products. And that looks good, the name. And then I'm going to change this. We're going to be calling this from the list component. So I'll change this to list component. And I'll leave this alone. And then here, we don't actually need a payload in this case. We're going to do very similar to what we did in the prior videos when we were doing the load products. So we'll remove the payload for that one. This is going to be for when we successfully load a list of products from the back end. So I'll change this over. So load list of products. So success. I'm going to change this to list effect. And then here we'll keep the payload just the way it is here. We're going to be passing in a array of products. And then this will be for a failure. So I'll add on failure here. And then failure here as well. So failure. Okay. And then changes over to list effect. That's where it's getting called from. And then error and that's a type of any okay so we did the first half i'm going to add a comment up here so we know uh, what section this is this is going to be for a list of products so products okay and then i'll add another one right here this is going to be for loading individual uh products all right and then here i'll get rid of the s and get rid of the s here and this is going to be called from the component And here we're going to pass an individual ID instead. And we will be passing in a string here in this case. And then this is when we successfully load a product. Make sure you remove the S and then success. And this I'll remove the S as well and add success. And this will get called from the effect file. So product effect. And as well as this too. So this get called from the effect file. Might as well change that over. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, this is not an array though. So remove this and remove this. So this will be passing in a individual individual product. So that looks pretty good. Didn't miss anything. Okay, and then here, same thing. Remove the S and then it's going to be failure. And then failure down here. And the effect, that looks good. And then here we're passing in the error in this case. And that's the type of any. And here I'm going to change this to selected product. We're going to actually add this to the store. So I just want to be more descriptive. And I'll explain that when we're setting up our reducers. And everything else looks really good. So that is what you want to do within your actions. So now let's set up our reducers. So our actions are looking really good. Now let's set up our reducers. And I think we're going to need like a total of four of them. If we go back to our project and open up the reducer file. And they give us uh, some boilerplate right here. And we're going to do something very similar to this. And we'll need a total of four of these. So just cut this out. And I'm going to move this to the top just to keep all our finished work at the top. Like we finished this up in the last video. So it's just a personal preference. I'm just going to move it up here and paste it and we need a total of four of these so uh, paste it three more times all right and we'll just start at the top and, and work our way down so uh, this is not going to get called the load products the load product success is what's going to get called to update our store so call that one and then this you can leave exactly the same and then what's really nice is our adapter gives us a method to add all our products to our store so that's really nice and then we want to handle our failure as well. So call that one. 
and then this is an error and I'll just copy this one right here it's it's exactly the same as this so copy this and I'll just remove this and don't forget to add this in here like that and then paste and that should be good that looks really nice now we want to handle our individual products so this one make sure you get rid of, rid of the s like I, I accidentally left the s in there and that uh, gives you a headache so I remove the s and then you want to call the load product success that one and then this is a little different we're gonna just uh, paste in a, that snippet that we just copied do this first and then paste and then instead of error, it's going to be selected product. So selected product. And we don't currently have this in the store yet. And we'll set that up in a second. And the action should have a property called selected product. That's what we're passing in with the action. Okay. And then we want to make sure we add this to the store. So copy this. Or to the state. And that is up here. And like it says here, you can add additional properties. I'll add it right below here. Paste it. And this will be the type of product. And make sure you add it here as well. And we'll just set it uh, as undefined. So paste undefined. Okay, so now that we added that, uh, we shouldn't get any errors for this. So that's good. And then the last but not least is our product load product failure. Again, remove the S, then failure. Uh, that The first one is the one you want. And it's exactly the same as this. I'll just copy this again. I'm a big fan of copying and pasting. And remove this line. Oops. Remove that whole line. And make sure you add this. Like that. And paste. And that is what your reducer should look like. I'll save it so it formats it for me real nicely. So if we go to the top. Uh, to this. All of this. This is what you want inside of your reducer file. Now we're ready to set up our effects. We'll need a total of two effects. The one effect will get an array of products, and the other effect will get a product by its ID. If we go back to our project and open up the effect file, and I'm going to paste a snippet we already created in a prior video, and I, I think it was video six we created this effect, and it's ex the exact same thing, and it's this one right here. So this gets a, a array of products, and we filter out for this action that we already created. And then if we successfully get a uh, list of products or an array of products from our get products, and I'll show you that in a second, the service, uh, we dispatch this action, the success, and we pass in the payload uh, products. And then if there's a failure, uh, we pass in the error in our load products action. And this operates exactly the same, but this is uh, getting an individual product from our service and let's check out our service if we open up our service and here are the two methods that we're calling these two so this returns an observable of uh, product array and this returns an observable of an individual product and we pass in an id right here and that's what we're actually doing uh on the second one here right here we're passing in the id from that we're getting from the action so that's pretty much it for our two effects so you, you want to set this up within your effect file. Now uh, let's set up our selectors. We also need a couple selectors. So the first selector is going to be for grabbing an array of products from our store. And the second selector is for grabbing an individual property from our store. In this case, the created product uh, property. So we'll create a total of two selectors. If we go back to our project, in a prior video, we set up our selectors within the reducer. But now we'll, we'll move everything out into the selector file. And the first thing we want to do is grab the slice out of the store, in this case, the product state, and we'll put it in a variable. And we're going to use uh, something from NGRX store. In this case, it's called the create feature selector. And here we can pass in a string like this. And also you want to set the type the, of the store that we're after. In this case, it's the product state. And we'll make sure we bring this in from our reducer file. And then here uh, you can pass it in as a string. But what I'm going to do is just go out to our reducer file and grab it. Like it's called products. And you can enter it in like this. That's total, totally legit. But what we'll do is we'll go into our reducer file since we already have it in memory. 
And this is what you're after, the products feature key, copy this. And then we'll jump back in here and replace this. So now we have the slice out of our store and now we could do anything we want with this. We grab a list of products, we grab any property we want. So let's start off with the list of products and we will put this in a variable. And now we're gonna use the create selector. So create selector, there it is. So the first parameter for this is the slice that we got out of our store. And that is this, copy this, throw it in here. And then the second one is going to be for what are you after? In this case, we're after everything. So select all. So we're after all of the products. And what's nice about this is uh, this is automatically given to us by our adapter. If we go down here, and this was set up in our boilerplate. And this adapter is very useful. As you notice, it gets used a lot. But we have this now. So we're able to select all our products. If we go back here. And this one's done. I could actually just copy this whole entire line and paste it. And now we're after a individual property within our store and it's the selected product. So I just add selected product right here. And we'll pass this in. And then this is gonna be a little different. So it's gonna be the product state that's being passed in. And then we want something out of that and that's the state and we have a couple properties we could select from in this case we're after the selected product we could set up something for the error but we'll do that in a later video and that's pretty much it for the two selectors that we're after and save this shut this down and shut this down now we're ready to start using everything now that we assembled all our ngrx pieces let's start using them within our components so we'll start dispatching some actions from our components and also using some selectors from our components. So if we go back to the uh, project and inside the components, we'll work inside of the product list. And also we'll open up this product component. This is for viewing individual products. So let's start with the product list. And we did something similar to this in a, in a prior video, but uh, what we'll do is the first thing is pull in our store right, right in the uh, constructor. So we'll bring that in and then the type is the product state. So we'll bring that in as well. So your import should look like this at the top. And then the first thing we'll do is we'll dispatch our load products from within the ng on it. I'll just call it right here. So we'll call our store and then that gives us a method of dispatch and we'll call the load products. And so make sure you select the correct one. So make sure you select this one right here. And then we need to call it. And in this case, we don't have to pass in any payload for this one. So uh, select this and bring this in from your actions. So that should be brought in right here. So now that we're dispatching this action and assuming that we are successful at loading a list of products, we should have a list of products in the store. And now we can go and get rid of all of this right here. Our effect is handling all this now. And then we can go into our store and grab that list of products. So this store. And then we're using the pipe in this case. And then uh, we want to use the select operator that NGRX gives us. So let's bring that in. And then the uh, selector that we set up and that's that was called select products, I think it was. So select products, this one right here. Okay, make sure you bring that in from your selectors file. Okay, so now uh, we want to assign this to a variable. We wanna do something with the values that we got. And I'm going to get rid of this variable. We're going to do it a little different. Now we're going to store an entire observable here. So it's, I'll call it the same like products, but now I add the dollar sign onto the end like that. And, and now it's going to be an observable of products and it'll be an array. Okay. And then we'll make sure we sign that variable. So this dot product like that equals that. Now we'll need to make one little change in our HTML because now that variable is missing. So we'll just save this, go into the HTML. And this now we want to add on the dollar sign and it's gonna be async. You need to do that when it's an observable. And everything should work pretty much the same here. We can save this. And we're pretty much done within the product list. We can shut this down 
and shut this down and then now we need to finish off our product component and we're going to do basically basically exactly the same we did in our product list so we need to bring in the store that one okay so we're bringing them in and then we want to dispatch our load product this this time and we can get rid of this I'll comment it out for now and we'll dispatch our load product so this and then dispatch and it's gonna be load product this time load product there it is and this is as a payload and it's the ID ID and then we're getting the ID from the route so I'll just copy this add it here and then paste and then make sure you bring this in from your actions file okay so now that we're dispatching it now we want to go and grab it assuming that this is successful we want to grab the uh, product from the store the selected product so we use our selector like we did before so this store and then the pipe this time and then the selector the or the select operator make sure we bring that in so i'll bring that in from ngrx that's this right here and then we'll call our selector and that's the selected product right here bring that in and then make sure you close it up and then here we want to assign this to this variable here so I'll just say this so product equals that okay and then I could get rid of this now and now we're ready for testing so let's restart the application so I'll open up the command line shut this down clear it out and then make sure you run npm run dev and let's check this out in the browser so now when we click on the view all products that should kick off an action because the component the product list component is being called so let's click on that and then as you can see the uh, load products action was kicked off and then we successfully got a list of products so if we click on the state of the store look in there and here is our list of products so now if we click on the view a individual product button that should populate our store with a selected product so click on this and then if we click on this there is the load product action that's good and then, then we successfully got a product from the back end and there it is in our store and there it is so that's perfect and everything is working just fine so now in the next video we're going to set up the update part of our crud functionality so i'll see you then